Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're painting a flat style gouache fiddle fig tree directly in Procreate. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. We'll be using my paid gouache lovers brush set for this entire project. So I'll leave a link right in the video description. We'll also be utilizing a source image for this. So I'll leave a link in the video description to that as well, along with my Pinterest board that has a bunch of other source photos. So if you enjoy the style and, and wanna play around with it a little bit more, there's a bunch of source images there. I'll also leave a link in the video description to my brand new course, Gouache Botanicals and Procreate, which also has a very comprehensive module on painting in this flat style. So I'm going to create a brand new canvas that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi. I work in the display p3 color profile, but if you're on an older iPad and don't have access to it, then the default sRGB color profile is perfectly fine. Okay, I've got my brand new canvas and the first thing I want to do is go and grab the source image from Pinterest that we'll be using for this. So I'm going to hop over to my Pinterest board right now and I'll show you where to find it. Okay, we're on my gouache source photos board. Once again, I'll leave a link link in the video description to this board and this is the image that we're going to be using. So just tap on the image and we need to save it to our camera roll. So just hit the three dots and down here hit download image and now it will be saved on our camera roll. So if I head back into Procreate, I can hit the little wrench icon, hit add, insert a photo and grab that image. Okay, I'm going to scale this up to the size that I want it at. I'm going to make this pretty large in my canvas. You may have noticed that I didn't mention a color palette this week and the reason for that is that we're going to be pulling color directly from the photograph and creating our own color palette that we'll be using throughout this project and we're going to be tracing this and then we're going to paint it all in from scratch so it will feel more original to you and all the decisions you make will feel less like the photograph and more like your original art. So the first thing we're going to do is create our sketch layer. So I'm going to create a brand new layer on top, label this one sketch. I'm going to grab black, so double tap where black is and that will give you true black. I'm going to grab the sketching pencil brush from the Squash Lovers brush set. And the size of my brush is going to be fairly small. I'm at 5% and I'm going to reduce the opacity of the photo. That way I can see my, my sketch layer pretty well, but I still wanna make sure I can see what I'm drawing underneath it. So I'm down to almost 40% here. You can include as many or as few details as you would like for this. I tend to simplify things quite a bit, but anything that seems like an important detail, like this flap of the leaf, I'll include that but I'm not going to draw in all the veining on each leaf because we're going to put that in later from scratch. I just like how it can look more original that way. So just come through, trace all the leaves however you would like. You can leave leaves out if you don't wanna include them all. It's your drawing. You can decide whatever you wanna do here. Okay, I'm going to do a quick check to make sure that I got all the details that I wanted to. So if I turn this on and off, I can make sure that I got all the leaves and I think that I did. I left some elements out in this area just because I felt like there was just a lot going on and I wanna simplify things so it becomes really clear to the viewer what's going on. If I'm confused just by tracing it, then they could be confused by looking at it. You'll also notice that I excluded the stand down here. I just want the pot to sit on a surface. So I'll be painting in a shadow underneath this pot once we start painting. But this is my sketch layer, so I'm all set now. I like keeping a copy at full opacity over to the right as I work, that way I can grab color if I ever need to. So I'm going to duplicate my photo layer, turn on the visibility, max out the opacity so we have the full color of it and now I'm going to reduce the size of it and pop it up here. Actually if I I can crop off the side of this photo if I just drag it over here and then deselect, select it again, now I've got it cropped so now it's not going to run into my drawing as I'm referencing it. It can stay nice and small over here. So now let's create our color palette. I'm going to create a brand new layer right above this photo and label this one color. And I'm going to look at this and try and minimize the amount of greens that I need to use. And then I'm just going to use those greens for all the leaves. I'm not going to add any more after I establish my color palette. So this part's super important. So I know that I need a green for some of these highlight areas, these highlight leaves. There's not very many of them. It's like right here, this leaf, this leaf, and this leaf. Those are my lightest leaves, maybe this corner of this one if I wanted to include that. But the rest of them are mostly this lime green, this medium green, and then I've got these darker greens in here too. So I know that I need 
a light colored green. So I'm going to grab like that one. And let's paint these with our thick round opaque. So I'm just going to draw them in a row and I'm just going to give myself some color dots up here that I can pull from. So this is my light green. I'm going to grab this lime green, kind of like it being just a smidge darker. So wherever I have even close to this green, that's the green I'm going to pull. And then I have a darker version of this over here. And then this one's like the super dark version of it. Got a medium green. So let's grab something over here. It's totally up to you which greens you want to pull. These are just the ones that I want in mine. And I want to make sure these all look pretty different. And then I'm going to grab my super dark green. Okay, so these two are pretty similar, so I could get rid of one of them if I wanted to. I think this one's got a little more blue in it, so I, I actually wanna keep both of them. And then I need to grab a brown for my branches, and then we need to take care of our little pot down here. So I'm going to grab the gray for the inside. I'm going to grab kind of a medium gray for the outside. There's a highlight around the ring of it up here that I really like that I want to make sure I keep. So I'm going to grab this lighter white and grab it over here. This base right here that's kind of a pinkish color and grab that one. Okay, so we got our colors and I can color drop these whenever I need them. I'm not going to color drop from the photo. I'm just going to use this palette that I just made. I'm going to move this photo down a little bit since I painted in some color dots on top of it, and now we're ready to go. So I'm only going to look at this photo to see what color leaf I need to make, and then I'm going to grab one of these colors that we already decided on. So this will just make the painting more original to you because it's based on the individual decisions that you're making for your painting. So now we can start painting. I'm going to create a brand new layer right above the sketch layer and label this one leaves and let's get started. So I usually look at leaves that are further towards the back and then I work my way forward. That way any of the lighter colored leaves will always be on top of the darker ones if they're in the foreground. And that way it gives me a sense of depth at the same time. So I'm going to, you can see this one right here. This one's the lightest one and then we've got kind of this color right next to it. So that's what I'm going to paint. So I'm going to grab that one first. And I'm going to reduce the size of my brush. I'm still using the thick round opaque brush for this. And now it's like a coloring book. You're just going to color in your outlines. So I'm going to create a brand new layer underneath the leaves layer. So tap on the sketch layer, create a brand new layer, label this one branches. We're just going to paint those in. That way everything's not just floating. So I'm going to grab the brown color and paint all the branches this same brown color using the same brush that we've been using. Okay, so let's turn off the sketch layer. I'm going to make sure that this is the same thickness right here. Now that we have this, let's add in the details to our leaves and then we can finish everything off by painting our container and then the background. For the leaves, I'm going to create a brand new layer right on the top and label this one leaf details. And these leaf details are going to be nice and bold and obvious because the fiddle fig tree, you can see the veining is very, very clear on these. So it's going to really bring this to life by adding those simple details in. So I generally decide on a color, a nice contrasting color that I'm going to use for each color. This one, for example, is this color. So I'm going to choose a really dark color. That way you can see it and it's nice and obvious. And then whenever I paint another leaf this color, with the veining, I'm going to use the same color for the veining. If you switch the veining color, it just won't look as consistent. It won't have the same effect. So I definitely recommend keeping whatever veining color you pair with the leaf color, keep that consistent. For this one, I'm going to use this color right here and I'm just going to freehand this. Draw a line down. These ones are pretty simple. I'm going to reduce the size of this down to 4%. Draw this down and then draw that veining in and Let's see, I'm going to be really careful not to overlap other leaves. Let me erase that part away. Since this is on the top layer, it's really easy to end up overlapping some leaves and we don't wanna ruin the effect that this has. The next one I'm going to paint is this one. So I'm going to choose that same color for this color as well because my other color, this one, I don't think would be contrasting enough. And I can just reference the photo if I wanna look at where the veins are for it. 
I'm going to add one in here. And you can invent your own too, that's also fine. So I just noticed I painted this veining in on a new color and I want to change the color up that way I'm not using the same veining color for everything. So because this one's a darker color, I can opt for a lighter color veining. So let me switch over to, let's see if this one's contrasting enough. Yeah. So you can see that just by adding these bold details in, it instantly makes us recognizable as a fiddle fig. Now that we have our details in, all we have left to do is to paint our container and add in our background. So I'm going to turn the sketch layer back on. I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it and label this one container. And I'm going to paint in the inside first. So we're going to grab that gray color. And then I'm going to paint the container itself and then we'll add in that highlight on the edge. I wanna make sure that highlight overlaps the inside gray and the outside gray. So you can see that I'm painting in one stroke. This brush has built-in layering on it so it looks like paint being built up. So if I paint on top of this, you can see I get a shadow and that can be a really cool painterly effect for some things, but for other things you may want it to be more flat and smooth, which I do in this case. So that's why I kept my stylus on the screen until I finished painting. Okay, so now I can add in that highlight. So I'm going to grab that brighter white and paint along this top edge. And then I can paint the base. Okay, let's turn off the sketch layer and see how that looks. If you have any gaps, you can use your smudge tool and grab the blender brush, which is part of the set. Reduce the size way down. You can just push the color up to meet it. That way you don't have to paint in an additional stroke. You can just smooth it out. Okay, and then the last thing I wanna do is add a shadow underneath this since I'm putting it on the floor instead of in a stand. So I'm going to create a brand new layer above the sketch layer and just label this one shadow. And I'm going to use the brown color that we use for the branches. And I'm just going to paint a freehand oval right here. And then I can move it into place. So now comes the really fun part of painting in our background. So I'm going to grab the same color as this wall over here. And I can turn off my color and my photo. Looks like I have a few remnants over here so I can find out which layer that's on and just erase those away. So now we're going to come underneath everything and label this one background. So what we're going to do, this one's kind of a multi-layered background. So we're going to add a background color and then we're going to add in some paint streaks. We're going to smudge paint streaks and then have paint streaks that are not smudged. The first thing we need to do is add this background color. So I'm going to use this color right up here and it's this first one in the history. So I'm going to tap on the background color layer and tap on this one right here. For whatever reason, it switches to white right here, but you want the second one. And now I'm going to come to the background layer that we just created. I'm going to grab my flat opaque brush. And this flat opaque brush has built in color dynamics. So the color shifts just slightly as you change your stroke. So it's okay to use the same color as the background color because we're going to get some tonal differences just with the general nature that this brush has built into it already. So I can just paint in some diagonal strokes and you can see those color variations showing up right here, which is pretty cool. And the next thing I'm going to do is duplicate this background layer. So slide it to the left, hit duplicate. We're going to turn off the top layer. And on the bottom layer, we're going to smudge this one. So we're going to make this look super painterly. So I'm going to grab the smudge brush, make sure you have the blender brush selected and make sure the size is up to max. And you're just going to go in the same direction and push on the ends. And I like pushing in both directions. So I push it out and push it in. 
So it makes this really soft edge that has some color changes on it. So it looks much more interesting than just flat color, especially since we have a lot of flat color in our main subject. So now we're going to come over here and turn our background layer back on. And it's subtle enough where I'll just leave this this way. If it's too strong for you, just reduce the opacity. But you can see the layering of the paint it looks like real paint back here, and it's pretty cool on top of a subject that's more flat. It gives you that nice contrast and texture. Okay, once you have your background all set, you can label this if you'd like, or you can just leave it and call it done. I'm going to turn on my color layer really quick. I'm going to grab the brown color and grab my dried out brush, turn off that color layer, and this one I'm just going to label lettering. I always call this a fiddle fig tree, but it's actually fiddle leaf fig tree. I'm just going to label it correctly here, even if I'm not saying it correctly. So that's how to create a flat style gouache fiddle leaf fig tree directly in Procreate. Once again, links to everything mentioned in this tutorial are right in the video description, including the source photo, the Pinterest board, the gouache lovers Procreate brush set, and my gouache botanicals and Procreate online course. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site every hyphen tuesday.com you can also find me over on instagram my handle is every tuesday if you try this out and post it there i would love it if you tag me thanks so much for watching and i will see you next week